What's up, Pan Dudes? Peter Von Panda here. Hey, I want to show you a watch of mine that's in actually very, very original condition. And it's not one that I've showed you before, and I'm busting it out because I just kind of looked around online, and there are very few reviews or videos of this particular one, but there are reviews of other Balm & Mercier watches online. And this one is uh, similar to other Capelin Chronograph flybacks in that it's really physically no different. But it was special in that this one was a limited edition celebrating, I think, the 40th anniversary of the United Arab Emirates. I kind of wanted to give you a little tour of this watch and kind of just quickly show it to you. It's interesting because the top says telemeter or telemeter, but this inner um, red dial right there or kind of the, uh, the inner markings there are for a tachymeter. So I thought I'd explain those too. Just kind of give you a look at the watch, which I really, really like. First of all, I, I picked this one up because my buddy LJ Hill back in college was into Bomb and Mercy watches. I had never even heard of them at that time, but uh, they've come a long way. And at the time I was looking at the watches, I wasn't really a big fan. They were a little smaller, a little more classically designed, but this one made me change my mind and, and pick it up. I believe this came out in about 2012-ish. Uh, it's about four years old. And I, like I said, I think it was celebrating the 40th anniversary of the United Arab Emirates, which is part of kind of that conglomerate of Middle Eastern countries. The UAE has been actually a very strategic and uh, friendly partner to the United States in a lot of ways in terms of very rich oil country, but then they've also been very uh, cooperative with us in kind of military support. For instance, my cousin who flies for the Air Force uh, flew quite a few sorties out of the UAE specifically. Anyway, um, the first thing I will tell you about this is that uh, even though the, the case and the, the design and the style is all straight up Capelin chronograph, the the thing that really sets it apart is the color scheme and the reason that the color scheme is different is that it, it because it celebrates or lifts the colors of the uae flag which is right up here and as you can see it is green and red uh is a very um predominant color uh, scheme of it and so what you have here is this inner dial is red and the outer dial of the telemeter is green and then kind of right inside of that green dial is black the arabic numerals for the hours are black uh, if you get this watch uh, in just the standard capelin i think it's kind of a white dial with black markings with a black printing uh, so this one is a little bit different and i like it i think it works it actually works with the vintage look of this watch so what i like are marriage watches that take kind of the old movements dials and or pocket watches and put them in new cases i think they look great the problem with those are to me is that a lot of them have mineral crystals and a lot of those old movements while decent are not very high tech. I mean, not that uh, a mechanical or automatic movement is high tech, but uh, the new movements are much more forgiving in terms of impact. The clutches, they don't allow you to kind of overwind them. Uh, they're more accurate, higher quality, they're polished and perlaged and beautiful, et cetera, et cetera. And so uh, a kind of a modern watch with classic styling is like a pro street uh, car. It, it, it kind of looks like an old vintage car, but it has all uh, kind of modern, reliable underpinnings whereas if you get with those older classic watches in my opinion you know they kind of suffer a little bit you you got to be careful on you know jarring them around etc cetera, etc cetera. so the beauty of this is that they really went back to kind of the 50s and 60s style of the bomb merciers and kind of lifted that and borrowed it and brought it forward and so you have this really classic style watch that looks like a really old vintage watch but doesn't have any of the quirks of an old watch and in fact not only uh do some of those old watches have mineral crystals or glass crystals? This one has sapphire, and it's a huge sapphire crystal. Now, this case isn't very big, 44 millimeters in diameter, although it doesn't look like it's 44 millimeters in diameter. It looks a little smaller to me because it's so thick. It's actually over 16 millimeters thick. And right there, spoiler alert, you know why it's so thick. Look at the way that crystal sticks out. I mean, it is a, it is domed to the hilt. Look at that. I mean, not only is it domed up here, so you, you've got over 16 millimeters from top to bottom, but then the edges roll over and the crystal sticks out quite a bit from the, the case and the bezel. Now, it all rolls together. It's really nice. I mean, it feels good. Obviously, there's a gap and a lip there, but you know, it, it seems like it's all kind of married together and the design works. Now, on the back, 
a lot of times this is a mineral crystal and this is also on this a sapphire crystal and it is also domed which is why it it, it looks very uh you know where a lot of watches are very pancake-ish this looks like more bulbous and so it kind of hides the 44 millimeter width which isn't huge but it's fairly big and so because of how high it is it kind of looks a little narrower right but uh it is 44 millimeter millimeters and which is why i liked it a lot of the bombs are still a little bit smaller but you can see here this curved crystal flows really really nicely with the curved case back here um really really beautiful again this one's a limited edition one of a hundred the uae edition uh, in the capelin here but even in the back uh you can see here the perlage and the the Geneva lines, you can see that rotor really moves really nicely. In terms of the movement here, I believe it's a Le Jopere Caliber 8147-2, I believe specifically. Correct me if I'm wrong on that, but it's really nice. You can see the blue screws there. And, you know, I, I don't know. I've, I've heard people are like, oh, you know, they just don't decorate their movements very much. But I think that's a, uh, I think that's a handsome looking movement. Now, I believe these are variations of the Etta 7750 uh, automatic movement but I also believe that they are modified for the flyback chronograph feature and we'll get into that because it's actually pretty nifty but I just think really really beautiful you can see here the back case is polished the front case is also polished probably the one thing about the front of the case that I don't really like as much um, although it's 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 really really minimal on this is i don't really like these a, a, a big bezel here i think uh, when you have kind of a big flat polished bezel surrounding the crystal it kind of looks like an afterthought it looks like it's you're trying to make a watch big by just filling that outside now when you look straight at it that bezel does not look very big so i like that but kind of when you get the big flat bezel uh, on some watches i'm just not a big fan of that this has a pretty big bezel but it's I, I, I still like it. I, st I like it. I like it. Uh, you can see here that the lugs are nice and curved. You know, they, they don't quite get down to the level of where the, the back is. So this is going to kind of press into your wrist a little bit. But then these lugs have some nice curve to them. Now you can see here the side is brushed stainless steel as opposed to the polishing. So you get a little nice two-tone effect there. There's nothing on that side. But then you have your, your pushers and your crown on this side. Now you have the a phi symbol. For those of you uh, who are my Greek friends that uh, think the phi symbol is kind of Bob Mercier's uh, kind of trademark symbol and you have some pushers here which are really really nice actually. Um, even though they're fairly simple in design, they're nicely done. They are, they have a little, uh, you know, a curved top here. Uh, the edge isn't just like a, it isn't like a, it's a little, it's like a reverse dimple almost. It, uh, you know, you've got a little bit of a bulge there, but then there's a little trough where uh, you've got this ring. So it's not just like a disc with a dimple or a, a, a bulb on the top. It's actually, there's a lot of little kind of subtle detail in there. And then kind of your, your typical plunger style pushers there. Knurling on the crown right there, so it's really easy to get a hold of uh, and to wind it up. You can hear it there, so... You know, you can wind this bad boy up right there. You can see it moving. Oh, typical automatic movement, second hand in the sub dial right there, as you can see it moving along there. Uh, Breguet style hands. Now these are just polished steel. They're just uh, silver, you know, a chrome-like finish. Uh, on the other Capelins, you can get them with a blued finish, and I love that. Blued finishes just get me warm in the loins. It would have been lovely to see that on there because I love blue finish, but I understand why they did the polished look there because blue is not in the UAE flag color scheme. And so why would you put a color, a very prominent color on a watch that's kind of modeled after the flag? Uh, because now all of a sudden if you have blue and red and a white dial, now you're looking like red, white, and blue in the United States. So I can understand why they didn't put the blue hands there, but I love blue. I love the blue hands. I love the blue screws. I love blue everything. Um, so I kind of get that, but it does help kind of make it consistent and look a little vintagey, right? Uh, the other thing that I want to say here is that the uh, chronograph, which is your kind of your big stopwatch hand right there, and it's just a vertical. If we hit it here with the start stop, I can stop the chronograph and reset it with the flyback button and the reset down here on the on the bottom now it it snaps that 
uh, timing hand all the way back to the top. Now, what makes this interesting with the flyback is that if I start it, I could actually hit the reset and it'll fly back and keep timing. That's actually useful if you're trying to time multiple intervals over a single event, right? So let's say I'm jogging a mile and I want to time each quarter mile, right? And figure out if I'm losing pace. What you can do is you can hit this bottom button and it flies back and it keeps timing, right? So I could say, wow, that took me 30 seconds, hit it again, you know, then you can see that the next interval takes you 32 seconds. It's actually a pretty useful feature. Now, uh, they say you can, you know, with the flyback, you don't lose any time while timing. Well, technically, there's some sort of duration of time that it takes for that, that hand to go all the way back to zero, but it's very, very small. But nonetheless, it does happen. So if I hit it again, boom, and it's continuing to time. So I'll just stop it there and reset it because I don't need to do that. So that's the flyback function, and it's really, really quite cool. I'm, I'm pretty impressed with that. Now, uh, the other thing that I wanted to mention here is the telemeter and the tachymeter. I've shown you in another video how to, I think on the Shinola Rambler um, 600 limited edition watch, how the tachymeters work. And those work literally by you uh, are timing over a particular interval. So you hit the stopwatch and your timing, let's say, um, let's say it's a mile that it takes you to get to a mile. If it takes you 60 seconds to get there, you're going 60 miles an hour. If it takes you 30 seconds, let's say I stop it right there on 15. Let's say it takes me 15 seconds to go a mile. I'm going 250 miles an hour or thereabouts. So that's how the tachymeter function works. So if you know the distance that you're covering and then stop the stopwatch over that distance, you, it, it'll give you a quick reference of how fast you're going. So that's pretty cool. Now the telemeter, the telemeter function is a little bit different. This telemeter, like telephone, is a reference to sound, an audible portion of timing. And so what's interesting is that it measures a visual marker and an auditory marker at the same time. So the one that comes right to mind is like watching Quigley down under. If you saw Quigley off in the distance, Matthew Quigley with his uh, Sharps rifle, and he shoots, you're going to see the flash of the rifle because light travels faster than sound. And then all of a sudden you're going to hear the bullet land somewhere near you, um, <laughs> you know, because the sound, the bullet's going to get to you faster than sound. But you're going to see the flash of the rifle, and then you're going to hear the crack of the gunshot, right? And there's going to be a difference between those two times. You're going to see the flash, and then you're going to hear the gunshot. And what you're trying to do here is measure how much time is in between there. And if you measure the difference, you can tell distance, right? So let's say I see Matthew Quigley shoot at me. Bang, I see the flash. I start the, the, the stopwatch here. And then, um, boom, I hear the, the gunshot itself. So I stop the stopwatch here again. You know, it took uh, oh, about six seconds. But what this tells me is that it's two kilometers away. You know, that example works actually for U.S. Army snipers or military snipers in general. Um, that sometimes when they... Um, hear a bullet land versus when they hear the gunshot, uh, they can quick kind of ballpark in their head how far away the sniper is. So that's how a telemeter works. My understanding, I'm not a very smart guy, so if, if I've made any mistakes on the tachymeter or telemeter here, please comment below, flame me, have a good time at it. I love it, love it. So we'll just go ahead and reset it there. So we covered a lot of ground today. We covered a lot of ground on uh, a watch that I really love because it looks vintage, It's but it has all kind of these modern trappings. I guess I could also say that this is the original band that it came with, which is in pretty nice condition, alligator crocodile uh, leather band with red stitching. So I think it's pretty sharp looking and uh, you know pretty bold, you know, and I think it fits well, although now that I've busted this out and, and reminded myself how much I really like this watch, seven to seven and a half inch wrist on for me, just a formal looking, good looking watch. Now that I see and remind myself how much I like it, I actually will probably bust this thing out. I think this is a 20 millimeter band and probably put a different band on it and use this as my daily wear for a little while. I'll probably put like a, a distressed leather, a brown leather band on it because I think that kind of matches this vintage dial here. And not that this is like a modern interpretation of a vintage dial. This is truly a vintage look here. Um, so I really like it. I'll probably replace that because I like keeping the uh, the bands in, in nice shape when I when I can on these original bands. The buckle here is also stainless steel. Oh, 
kind of troll with man it doesn't want to come off which maybe i should take as a hint that uh, i should be wearing this thing a lot you can see here it also is a, a two finish uh, polished on the sides brushed on the top with the phi logo or the phi symbol there as well so uh, just a just a really lovely lovely watch. Um, it's the watch that brought me back into Bon Mercier. I really like them. Um, I think you'll like it too. But this is the watch that sold me back into the fold. So Peter Von Panda with my Bon Mercier Capelin Flyback Chronograph Limited Edition United Arab Emirates out.